بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وبعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> We've reached the 27th sitting in the book uh, Majalis Shah Ramadan explained by Shaykh Muhammad Ibn Salih Al-Mutaymeen and um, we're carrying on from where Brother Wasim left off from, yes- uh, from yesterday's lesson so we're cutting on from the reasons for entering the hellfire. So the reasons and the causes for entering the hellfire. And we go, the Sheikh's going to go through the second type of people or categories, which if you fall into, you end up in the hellfire. And there's a reason for you to enter the hellfire. So inshallah, we'll begin. The Sheikh says, he says, al majlis wal the Sheikh says, فَأَجِيبُوا دَائِيَ اللَّهِ وَسَابِقُوا إِلَى, جم... إلى جَنَّتِهِ يَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَيُؤْتِكُمْ كِفْلَيْنِ مِنْ رَحْمَتِهِ أَحْمَدُهُ عَلَى جَلَالِ نُعُوتِهِ وَكَمَالِ صف... صِفَتِهِ وَأَشْكُرُهُ عَلَى تَوْفِيقِهِ وَسَوَابِغِ نِعْمَتِهِ Then the Sheikh says وَأَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَى اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ في ألوهيته وربوبيته وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله المبعوث إلى جميع بريته بشيرا للمؤمنين بجنته ونذيرا للكافرين بناره وسطوته صلى الله عليه وعلى أبي بكر خليفته في أمته ولا عمر المشهور بقوته على الكافرين وشدته ولا عثمان القاضي نحبه في محنته ولا علي بن عمه وزوج ابنته ولا سائر وعلى سائر اله وصحبه ومن تبعه في سنته وسلم تسليما so then uh, the sheikh he begins with the introduction of the lesson which of the rough translation is the rough translation of that being all praise and thanks are due to allah the one who with his ability created the creatures he created all that exists showed them the wonders of his wisdom within themselves and proved and proves and proves his oneness with his signs he decreed punishment on the sinner because of his disobedience and then invites him to repent and is graceful to him by accepting his repentance therefore therefore respond to allah's call and compete with one another towards his paradise he will forgive you your sins and will give you double reward. Will give you a double reward from his mercy. I praise him for the magnificence of his attributes and the perfection of his names. I thank him for granting us success and bestowing his bounties on us. And I bear witness that none has the right to be worshipped but Allah alone, in truth, without any partner, and in his lordship. <clears throat> so then uh, the Sheikh. He says, I also bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa is his slave and his messenger, the one who was sent to Allah's creatures as a bringer of glad tidings of paradise to the believers and as a warner of the hellfire to the disbelievers. May Allah shower his blessings on him and on his successor Abu Bakr uh, and Umar, the one who is infamous for his strength and sternness against the disbelievers. Uthman, the one who has passed away during his test and trial, Ali, the Prophet's cousin and son-in-law, on the rest of his family, companions, and whoever follows his footsteps and in his tradition. So then the Sheikh uh, continues. So that concludes the introduction. And so the Sheikh says, he says, Ikhwani, as he does in every chapter, Ikhwani, sabaka fi dars al-madi dhikru aiddati asbabi min min al-naw al-awwal min asbabi دخول النار الموجبة للخلود فيها وها نحن في هذا الدرس نذكر 
بمعونة الله عدة أسباب من نوع الثاني وهي الأسباب التي يستحق فاعله فاعلها دخول النار دون الخلود فيها So if you remember uh, yesterday when Brother Zim was going through the lesson we, we, the Sheikh mentioned that there's two types uh, of, of, of entering the hellfire and the first one is whoever falls into that category the first type then he is in the hellfire forever, eternally, won't come out of it. And the second type today, which we're carrying on from yesterday's lesson, we're going to go through the second type, uh, which the Sheikh said, it is uh, uh, it is the one where if you fall into any of these categories, you enter the hellfire, but it's for a period of time, depending on, um, depending on the type. The Sheikh will explain in further detail. So then... Uh, the Sheikh says, he says, so whoever falls into any of these, uh, the second type and set of categories in the second, under the second type, then they are deserved of uh, going into the hellfire, but not eternally. So for a period of time that Allah decides. So then the Sheikh says, um, a sabab al awwal, a sabab al awwalu. وقوق الوالدين وهما الأم والأب وقوقهما أن يقطع ما يجب لهما من بر من بر وصلة أو يسعى إليهما بالقول أو الفعل قال تعالى وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقول لهما أف ولا تنهرهما فقل لهما قولا كريما واخفض لهما جناح الظل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما وقل رب ارحمهما كما رب ياني صغيرا وقال تعالى أن اشكر لي ولوالديك أن اشكر لي ولوالديك إلي المصير وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ثلاثة قد حرم الله عليهم الجنة مدمن الخمر ولاقوا لوالديه والديوث الذي يقر الخبث في أحلي رواه أحمد والنسائي So let's just, just stop there for a second So then the Sheikh says, says The first cause of violating The first cause is violating the rights of your parents so the Sheikh goes on to say, he says, the father and the mother, by not fulfilling their rights which they have over you, for example, being disobedient to them, severing the ties between you and them, or harming them with statements or actions. Allah the Most High said, and your Lord has decreed that you worship none but Him and that you be dutiful to your parents if one of them or both of them attain old age in your life, say not to them a word of disrespect, nor shout at them, but address them in terms of honor. And lower unto them the wing of submission and humility through mercy and say, My Lord, bestow on them your mercy as they did bring me up when I was small. Surah Al-Isra, verse 23 to 24. And then the Sheikh quotes Hadith as well. Here, there's another ayah mentioned, Anishkur li wali walidayk ilayy al from Surah Al Luqman as well. You can have a look at the translation for that, inshallah. Then the Prophet said in hadith, There are three on whom Allah forbade paradise the alcoholic, the one who is undutiful to his parents, and um, the pimp, the one who allows his wife to do illicit and evil behavior. I think I'll use a better word because. There's some wording can be used. The one who is lax in his women folk has no jealousy. So a dayatha, like not having jealousy for your women folk. So you don't mind that other people, other men will just come and sit with them. And whether that's from uh, other extended parts of the family where we know obviously this mixing, social mixing is not allowed. Um, never mind anybody else from outside of the family, for example. So when this sort of thing is going on, it's called dayatha. And it's, have, it's a lack of jealousy. It's a, the men having a lack of jealousy for their women folk. 
So they let them uh, mingle with anybody, go here, go there, sit there, mix with men and all the rest of the, that stuff that goes on, as we will be familiar with, have heard stories about that or whether that's happened with, even within parts of our own families. A'udhu Billah. So, uh, so that's the end of that hadith. Uh, um, so these are the three types of people that will not enter Jannah. So let's just quickly go through that again. There are three on whom Allah forbade paradise. The alcoholic, the one who's undutiful to his parents, and the one who, who doesn't have jealousy for, uh, jealousy for his women folk and allows them to mix with anybody. Allows them to mix and mingle and, you know, all this kind of, you know, acts. Um... So that, that's uh, and that's collected by Ahmad al- and Al Bani graded it Hassan due to other narrations. So let's carry on. So then the Sheikh says, "A sabab thani, a sabab thani, qati'atu rahim, qati'atu rahimi, wa hiya an yuqati' al rajulu qarabatahu fa yamna ma yajibu lahum min hukuk badniya aw maliya." ففي الصحيحين عن جبير بن مطعم أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال لا يدخل الجنة قاطع قال سفيان يعني قاطع الرحم وفيهما أيضا عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إن الرحم قامت فقالت, فقالت لله عز وجل هذا مقام العائد بك من القطيئة قال نعم أما ترضين أن أسل من وصلك وأقطع من قطعك قالت بلى قال فذلك لك ثم قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم اقرأوا إن شئتم فهل أصيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطعوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وعما أبصارهم سورة محمد بس 22-23 So then the Shaykh goes on to say says and the second the second uh, cause is a cause of severing ties of kinship so the second cause is the tie, severing the ties of kinship and he explains he says this is when uh, a man boycotts his family or when somebody boycotts his family and stops giving them their financial and physical rights. It is narrated by Jubair ibn Mut'im anhu, that the Prophet wasallam said, the one who severs the family ties will not enter paradise, collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. It is also narrated by Abu, Abu Huraira anhu, that the Prophet wasallam said, he said, the womb said to Allah, Azza wa Jal, O oh Allah, at this place I seek refuge with you from all those who sever me, i.e. sever the ties of kith and kin. Allah said, Yes, won't you be pleased that I will keep good relations with the one who will keep good relations with you, and I will sever the relation with the one who will sever the relations with you. He said, Yes, O oh my Lord, Allah said, then that is for you. Allah's Messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, added, Read in the Quran if you wish or want to, Allah's statement, would you then, if you were given the authority, do mischief in the land and sever your ties of kinship? Surah Muhammad, verse 22 to 23. And the hadith is collected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim as well. So then the Shaykh goes on to say, he says, from what we've read here of his explanation, he says, وَمِنَ الْمُؤْسِفِ أَنَّ كَثِيرًا مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ الْيَوْمَ غَفَلُوا عَنِ الْقِيَامِ بِحَقِّ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَرْحَامِ وَقَتَعُوا حَبْلَ الْوَصِلِ وَحُجَّةُ بَعْضِهِمْ أَنَّ, أقار... أن أقار... أَقَارِبَهُ لَا يَصِلُونَهُ وَهَذِهِ, ال... وهذه الْحُجَّةُ لَا تَنْفَعُ لِأَنَّهُ لَوْ كَانَ لَا يَصِلُ إِلَا إِلَّا مَنْ وَصَلَهُ لَمْ تَكُنْ, سلت... لم تكن سِلَتُهُ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّمَا هِيَ مُكَافَأَةٌ كَمَا فِي صَحِيحِ الْبُخَارِي عَنْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ بْنُ عَمْرِ ابْنُ الْعَاصِ رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُمْ أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ليس الواصل بالمكا... بالمكافئ ولكن الواصل الذي إذا قطيت رحمه وصلها وعن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه أن رجلا قال يا رسول الله إن لي قرابة أسلهم ويق... وي... وي... ويق... ويقطعونني وأحسن إليهم ويسيئون إليه و... 
واهل واهل ما عليهم ويجهلون عليه فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم ان كنت كما قلت فكانما تصفهم المل ولا يزال معك من الله ظهير عليهم ما دمت على ذلك رواه مسلم so let's just take a pause and translate that inshallah so then the sheikh says it is very sad and unfortunate that today many muslims have neglected to fulfill their the rights of their parents and the family ties rather you know they sever the ties and some of them justify this act by saying that their families do not keep their ties however this excuse is unacceptable because if we only keep the ties of those who keep their ties with us then we are not doing it for the sake of allah rather it is only us paying them back for what they did so we pay back with the same i am reciprocating the good they did as it is narrated by abdullah ibn amr ibn as radiyallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said he said the one who keeps the ties is not the one who only does it in return for what is done to him rather the one who keeps the ties is the one who who when the people sever their ties with him he keeps ties with them collected by al bukhari it is also narrated by abu huraira radiyallahu anhu that that a man said O Messenger of Allah, I have family members whom I keep ties with them, but they sever the ties with me. I treat them with kindness, but they harm me. And I am patient with them, but they are mean to me. So the Prophet ﷺ said, If you are what you say you are to them, then it is as if you are filling up their mouths with hot ashes, and Allah will help you against them as long as you remain consistent upon that. Collected by Muslim. So let's continue. The Sheikh then he says, وَإِذَا وَإِذَا وَصَلَ رَحِمَهُ وَهُمْ يَقْتَعُونَ يَقْتَعُونَهُ فَإِنَّ لَهُ الْحَاقِبَةَ الْحَمِيدَةَ وَسَيَعُ وَسَيَعُودُونَ فَيَسِلُونَهُ كَمَا وَصَلَهُمْ إِنْ أَرَادَ اللَّهُ بِهِمْ خَيْرًا So then the Sheikh says at the end of that uh, hadith that we read, he, the Sheikh says if he keeps his ties with them while they sever ties with him, then for him will be a good end. you know a praiseworthy end and they will return back to keeping their ties with him if allah wants good for them so then the shaykh continues we move on to the third cause for entering the hellfire uh, for an appointed period of time so the shaykh says as sabab thalithu akl ar riba qala ta'ala قال تعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا لا تاكلوا الربا اضعافا مضاعفا واتقوا الله لعلكم تفلحون واتقوا النار التي اعدت للكافرين واطيعوا الله والرسول لعلكم ترحمون وقد توعد الله تعالى من عاد الى الربا بعد ان بلغته موئذه الله وتحذيره توعده بالخلود في النار فقال سبحانه فقال سبحانه الذين الذين ياكلون الربا لا يقومون الا كما يقوم الذين يتخبطه الشيطان يتخبطه الشيطان من المس ذلك بانهم قالوا انما البيع مثل الربا واحل الله البيع وحرم الربا فمن جاءه موئذة من ربه فانتهى فله ما سلف وامره الى الله ومن عاد فاولئك اصحاب النار هم فيها خالدون so then the sheikh says he says the third cause for entering the hellfire for an appointed time the third reason allah the most high he said o oh, you who believe devour not interest involving multiple additions and fear allah that you may prosper and fear the fire which has been prepared for the disbelievers surah al imran verse 130-131 as for those who persist upon consuming interest after allah's warning and his admonition has reached them he has threatened to put them in the hell fire so then allah says those who devour interest do not rise except as rises one whom shaitan has uh, smitten with insanity and touched with insanity that is because they say trade also is like interest whereas allah has made trade lawful and has made interest unlawful so he to whom an admonition comes from his lord 
and he desists, then will that which he received in the past be his, and his affair rest with Allah, and those who revert to it, they are the inmates of the fire, therein shall they abide. Surah Al-Baqarah verse 275 So then the Shaykh moves on to the fourth cause, the fourth reason. He says, As-sabab al-rabi'u Aklu mali al-yatama Dhukuran kanu am inathan Wattala'ubu Wattala'ubu bihi Qala ta'ala Inna al-ladhina ya'kuluna amwal al-yatama Dhulman inna ma ya'kuluna Fi butunihim nara Wa sayaslawna sa'ira Wal-yatim huwa al-ladhi Ma ta'abuhu qabla an yablu So then the shaykh says the fourth cause and the fourth reason for entering the hellfire is devouring the wealth of the orphans, whether they be males or female orphans, and and misusing their wealth and playing around with their wealth and with them. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran, Surah Nisa, Nisa verse 10, Surely they who divide the property of the orphans unjustly only swallow fire into their bellies and they shall burn in a blazing fire. And then the Shaykh, he says, and an orphan, what is classed as an orphan? Because there's a common misconception uh, amongst a lot of people of what, what is an orphan or what constitutes an orphan. An orphan is uh, a child who hasn't reached the age of puberty and their father has died. Yeah, and their father has died. Yeah, so uh, sometimes people say, for example, and I've come across this uh, uh, some of the other brothers would have come across this as well, where um, you, somebody might say, oh, this person's yatim, but he's a fully grown man. You know, um, he's past the age of puberty and he's a fully grown man, for example, a fully grown woman, and they're classing them as yatim or orphan, which is incorrect classification. So the Sheikh says he clarifies what, what's the definition of an orphan, and that is what he mentioned. We'll just mention it again for clarity. He says, um, uh, a child... Uh, who hasn't raised, uh, reached the age of puberty and his, his or her father has passed away. Yeah. So then uh, the Sheikh moves on to the fifth category or fifth type or cause of entering the hellfire. Um, he says, As-sabab al-khamisu shahadatu al-zuri faqad rawa ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma ani nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fannahu qala lan, lan tazula قد مشاهد الزور حتى يوجب الله حتى يوجب الله له النار حتى يوجب الله له النار رواه ابن ماجة والحاكم وقال صحيح الإسناد صحيح الإسناد شهادة الزور أن يشهد بما لا يعلم أو يشهد بما يعلم أن الواقع خلافه لأن الشهادة لا تجوز إلا بما علم الشهاد الشاهد وفي الحديث قال قال لرجل ترى الشمس قال نعم قال على مثلها فشهد أو دع. So then the Sheikh he says the sixth the fifth cause for entering the hellfire is false witness giving false witness being a false witness. So Abdullah ibn Umar رضي الله عنه ما narrated that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said. The bearer of false witness will not take a step until Allah necessitates on him that he enters the hellfire. Ibn Majah narrated this hadith. Likewise, Al-Hakim, there's, an, there's a note here, side note, Al-Albani created this nation to be fabricating a zaifa. That's something to uh, look into. Um, but the meaning, general meaning. So the Shaykh then continues, says, false witness is to testify concerning what you do not know or to testify concerning something while knowing that, that the truth is the opposite of what you what you are saying. Testimony is not permissible except if the testifier knows what he is testifying to. And in another narration uh, um, that the Sheikh brings, he says uh, uh, that the Prophet ﷺ said to a man, "Can you see the sun?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Then said he said he then said to him, let your testimony be like the way you can witness the sun. Otherwise, do not testify at all." Collected by Al Bayhaqi and Al Hakim with the, with the, another type of wording as well, but we we go with this one that the Sheikh quoted. So that's uh, the sixth 
sorry, the fifth cause. So move on to the sixth cause of entering the hellfire. Then the Sheikh he says, "Asababu sadisu al-rishwatu fi al-hukmi fa'an Abdullah ibn Amr radiyallahu anhu ma anna Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala al-rashi wal-murtashi fi al-nar rawahu al-Tabarani." وروته ثقات معروفون قاله في الترغيب والترهيب قال في النهاية الراشي من الراشي من يؤتي الذي يعينه على الباطل والمرتشي الآخذ فأما ما يؤتى ما فأما ما يؤتى توصلا إلى أخذ حق أو دفع ظلم فغير داخل فيه. سودان الشيخ يقول the um, sixth cause of entering the hellfire, sixth reason for you to go into the hellfire is taking bribes. Rishwa. As they say in Urdu, Rishwa. Yeah, Rishwa. Taking bribes when judging between the people. So taking bribes when judging between the people, it is narrated by Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu said, the Rashi, i.e. the giver of bribery and the murtashi, i.e. the receiver of bribery, are both in the hellfire, collected by the Burani and others. And Al Albani, there's a footnote here, Shaykh Al Albani read it to be weak in Laif al Jami. Then the Shaykh mentions he, i.e. Ibn Athir, said in in Nihaya that 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 uh, Nihaya that the Rashi, the one who's giving the the bribe. The Rashi, which means a briber, is the one who gives to whoever helps him upon his falsehood. And the Murtashi is the one who takes the bribe. There are those intended in the Hadith for us for whatever money is given to help receive your due right or repel oppression. This will not be considered bribery. So that's a, a point to note in understanding that situation. Then the Sheikh moves on to the seventh cause. He says, as sabi'u اليمين الغموس فعن الحارث بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحج بين الجمرتين وهو يقول من اقتطع مال أخيه بيمين بيمين فاجرة فليتبوأ مقعده من النار ليبلغ شاهدكم غائبكم مرتين أو ثلاثا رواه أحمد والحاكم وصحها وسميت غموسا لأنها تغمس الحالفة بها في الإثم ثم تغمس في النار ولا فرق بين أن يحلف كاذبا على على مدعه مدعه فيحكم له به أو يحلف كاذبا على ما أنكره فيحكم ببراءته منه so then the Sheikh, he says, the seventh cause of entering the hellfire, and he says, was called Yamin al Ghamus. He'll explain what that means, Yamin al Ghamus. There isn't really much of an English term for it. It's like an oath. So, uh, like a false oath or perjury. So then the Sheikh, he explains, he says, it is narrated by Al Harith ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, who said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying, Whoever swears falsely in order to oppressively take the wealth of his brother should take his sitting place in the hellfire. Let those who are present convey the message to those who are absent. So that's what Yamin al Ghamus is. And then the Shaykh, he said, he repeated it twice or three times. The, the, the Prophet ﷺ repeated this two to three times in collected by Ahmad and Hakim and Al-Bani did it to be authentic in Sayyid al-Targheeb. Then the Shaykh, he says, it is, uh, it is called al Ghamus. I literally meaning plunging or sinking. Why? Because it plunges the one who took the oath into sin and plunges him into the hellfire and there is no difference between him swearing falsely on his claim in order to receive judgment on his side or swearing falsely on something that he denies in order to be judged for his innocence. So that, that's a clear explanation, alhamdulillah, of that. So then the Sheikh moves on to the eighth cause. He says, السبب الثامن القضاء بين الناس بغير علم أو أو ب أو بجور وميل لحديث بريدة بن الحصيب رضي الله عنه أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال القضاة 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 
ثلاث أو القضاة ثلاثة واحد في الجنة واثنان في النار فأما الذي في الجنة فرجل عرف الحق وقضى به ورجل عرف الحق فجار في الحكم فهو في النار ورجل قضى للناس على جهل فهو في النار رواه أبو داود وترمذي وابن ماجا So then the Sheikh he says the eighth cause of entering the hellfire and he says oppressively judging between the people without knowledge while taking sides. So he goes on to explain, he says it is narrated by Burayda ibn Hussain <clears throat> ibn Hussain Hussain, sorry uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said he said there are three types of judges one of them will be in paradise and two will be in the hellfire. As for the one who will be in paradise, it is a man who knows the truth and judges by it. And the two who will go to the hellfire are a man who knows the truth but is wrongful in his judgment. He will be in the hellfire. And a man who judges between the people upon ignorance, he will also be in the hellfire. Collected by Abu Dawood uh, and At-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and Al-Albani, Rahmullah, graded it to be authentic in Sayyid Abu Dawood. Then we move on to the ninth cause, the ninth cause of entering the hellfire, or the ninth reason. As-sabab al-tasi'u al-ghishu lil-ra'iyyati wa'adm al-nusfi lahum bihaythu yatasarrafu tasarrufan laysa fi maslahatihim wa la maslahati al-amali li hadithi ma'qil ibn Yasir, Yasarin radiyallahu anhu qal Sami'tu al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqulu ما من عبد يسترعيه الله على رعية يموت يوم يموت وهو غاش وهو غاش لرعيته إلا حرم الله إلا حرم الله عليه الجنة متفق عليه وهذا يوم رعاية الرجل في أهله وسلطان وسلطان في سلطانه وغيرهم لحديث ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كلكم راء ومسؤول عن رأيته الإمام راء ومسؤول عن رأيته ورجل راء في أهله ومسؤول عن رأيته والمرأة رأية في بيت زوجها ومسؤولة عن رأيتها والخادم راء في مال سيده ومسؤول عن رأيته وَكُلُّكُمْ رَائِنْ وَمَسْؤُولٌ عَنْ رَائِيَتِهِ مُتَّفَقٌ عَلَيْهِ So then the Shaykh, he says, the ninth cause and that of entering the hellfire and that is cheating the subjects or cheating the citizens and not putting their interest into consideration. Then the Shaykh explains it further. He says, in such a way that the leader does things which are not beneficial to the subjects and not in their interest. The proof for this is in the narration of Ma'aqal ibn Yasar radiyallahu anhu who said, I heard the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam saying, "There is no slave whom Allah will put to be in charge of subjects and then dies while cheating them, except that Allah will make the paradise forbidden for him." Collected by Al Bukhari and Muslim. So the Sheikh says this includes the responsibility of a man over his family, a ruler over his subjects, and other than them. The proof for this is the narration of Abdullah, uh, of Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu. He said, "I heard the Messenger of Allah." Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saying saying all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible for your flocks the ruler is a shepherd and is responsible for his flock a man is a shepherd over his family and is responsible for his flock a woman is a shepherd in her husband's home and is responsible for her flock a servant is a shepherd over the wealth of his master and and is responsible for his flock all of you are shepherds and all of you are responsible i.e you will be questioned on the Day of Judgment about these responsibilities or on the responsibility of your flocks. Collective Al-Bukhari and Muslim. And then the Shaykh moves on to the tenth the tenth cause of Ejjin al He says, As-sabab al-ashir Tasweeru ma fihi ruhun min insanin aw hayawanin fa'an ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma qala سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل مصور في النار يجعل له بكل سورة صورها نفسا 
فتعذبه في جهنم رواه مسلم وفي رواية للبخاري من سور سورة فإن الله معذبه إن الله معذبه معذب حتى ينفخ فيها الروح وليس بناف وليس بنافخ فيها أبدا فأما تصوير الأشجار والنبات والثمرات ونحوها مما مما يخلقه الله من الأجسام النامية فلا بأس به على قول جمهور العلماء ومنهم من منع ذلك لم لما في صحيح البخاري عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال سمعت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول قال الله عز وجل ومن أذلم من من ذهب يخلق كخلق فليخل فليخلق ذرة أو ليخلق حبة أو شعيرة So then the tenth type or the tenth cause of entering the hellfire for a point of period of time the shape says he says making pictures taking pictures making pictures any type making pictures drawing it you know drawing it with your hand paintbrush taking it with a camera all of this constitutes pictures making pictures of living things including humans and animals so making pictures of living things including humans and animals the proof for this is the narration of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhum who said I heard the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam saying all picture makers will be in the hellfire for each picture that he made a soul will be made for him and it will punish him in the hellfire and that's from Al-Bukhari and Muslim Sahih Al-Bukhari and Muslim In the narration of Al-Bukhari it says whoever made a picture Allah will punish him till he blows a spirit in it but he will not be able to do so i he not he won't be able to blow a spirit in it because he's not in the he can't give life it's only allah who gives life so he'll be punished so then the sheikh says he says as for making pictures like taking pictures and making drawing pictures and painting pictures and all that which constitutes pictures uh, of trees plants grains and the, their likes from among the things which are like created there's nothing wrong with that according to the statement of the majority of the scholars right and that's the, uh, the that's a consensus of the scholars however some of the scholars also prohibited that as well that is based on the narration of abu huraira radiyallahu anhu where he said i had the messenger of allah saying who is more sinful than the one who tries to create like my creation let them create an atom let them create a seed or let them create bali but they never will be able to because we can't create anything from nothing only allah can do that so that's uh, important to know especially um, in our time where pictures are taken uh, willy nilly left right center and uh, people are unaware of this uh, in our deen that it's 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 not permissible to take pictures uh, based on the evidence we have read from sahih bukhari and muslim uh, clear proofs there are uh, taking a picture of something that has a soul in it which uh, the sheikh explained rahimahullah uh, so then we move on to the 11th cause of entering the hellfire and the sheikh he says السبب الهادي عشر ما ثبت في الصحيحين عن حارث عن حارثة بن وهب أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ألا أخبر ألا أخبركم بأهل النار كل أطل كل أطل جواز مستقبر فالأطل فالأطل الشديد الغليظ الذي لا لا يلين للحق ولا للخلق والجواز الشحيح البخيل وهو جماء مناع فهو جماء مناع والمستكبر هو الذي يرد الحق ولا يتواضع للخلق فهو يرى نفسه أعلى من الناس ويرى رأيه أسوب من الحق So then the Shaykh goes on to say the 11th cause and he says the 11th cause of entering the hellfire is what was narrated by Harith ibn Wahab, who said that the Prophet ﷺ said, Shall I not inform you of the people of the hellfire? It is very, it is every stone-hearted person who does not lean to the truth and is not lenient to the creatures, and every selfish and stingy person who takes but does not give, and every arrogant individual who rejects the truth, belittles the people and thinks he is better than others, 
and that his opinion is the most correct and the truth. Corrected by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. So then the shaykh goes on to the twelfth reason or cause to enter the hellfire. And he says, السبب الثاني عشر استعمال أوان الذهب والفضة في الأكل والشرب للرجال والنساء ففي الصحيحين من حديث أم سلمة رضي الله عنها أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال الذي يشرب في آنية الفضة إنما يجرجر في بطنه نار جهنم وفي رواية لمسلم وفي رواية لمسلم إن الذي يأكل أو يشرب إن الذي إن الذي يأكل أو يشرب في آنية الذهب والفضة إنما يجرجر في بطنه نار جهنم فاحذروا إخواني أسباب دخول النار وأعلموا الأسباب التي تبعدكم عنها لتفوزوا في دار القرار وأعلموا أن الدنيا متاع قليل صريعة الزوال والانهيار واسألوا ربكم واسألوا ربكم الثبات على الحق إلى الممات وأن يحشركم مع الذين أنعم الله عليهم من المؤمنين والمؤمنات. So then the Sheikh he says the twelfth cause of entering the hellfire the reason using utensils of gold and silver so using utensils of gold and silver for eating and drinking for both men and women it is narrated from um salama radiallahu anha that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said the one who drinks from silver utensils is only dragging hellfire in his stomach collected by al-bukhari in another hadith also narrated in the narration of muslim it says the one who eats or drinks from the from gold from the gold from gold and silver utensils is only dragging the hellfire in his stomach collected by a muslim and on the authority of abdullah ibn abbas radiallahu anhu who reported that the messenger sallallahu saw a man wearing a gold ring on his hand the prophet sallallahu pulled it off and threw it away so this is additional uh, narration related to this that the messenger of Allah, uh, of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, saw a man wearing a gold ring on his hand. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam pulled it off and threw it away saying, one of you is aiming for live coal from hell and wearing it on his hand. It was said to the man, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam departed, take, take your ring and get some type of benefit from it. At that point, the man said, I would never take this ring when the messenger has thrown it away. Well, that's a bit of a uh, side, side point, um, uh, the hadith. But the two hadith that we mentioned at the start, uh, they are relevant here, alhamdulillah. So then the Sheikh says, be careful, he says, be careful my brothers, of everything that leads to the hellfire, take the means that will keep you far away from the hellfire, in order that you can be successful in obtaining the home of perpetuity, meaning um, uh, paradise, and know that this world is a little enjoyment which will quickly vanish and be over. So comparing the Akhirah to the dunya, so pray to your Lord to keep you firm upon the truth, until death reaches you. Ask Allah to resurrect you amongst those whom he has bestowed his favor upon from among the believing men and women. And then the Shaykh, he mentions a dua, supplication. So let's read that and then we conclude the lesson. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma thabitna ala al-haqqi wa tawaffina alayhi wa aghfir lana wa li walidina wa li jami'i al-muslimin bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. so we conclude there. that concludes the lesson from yesterday by brother Wasim and today regarding um, uh, the reasons for uh, the reasons for entering the hellfire. so when brother Wasim covered that lesson was to do with the first type that the sheikh uh, was uh, explaining, meaning that the, the that lesson was to do with the people entering any of those reasons they enter the hellfire for eternity. They won't come out of it. And today's lesson concludes uh, the whole uh, lesson with regards to this uh, chapter that the second type is, uh, which we discussed today, is for those people who fall into any of these categories that we discussed today, well, they'll go into the hellfire for an appointed time, so they won't go eternally. And that uh, um, now uh, concludes uh, those two lessons together. Alhamdulillah. So inshallah, we'll continue uh, tomorrow. Bithinillahi ta'ala. Barakallahu feekum. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت وأستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته